Hello and welcome to the show. This week's fail race versus the community was A-Class Mustangs versus Camaros and we start at the Infineon NASCAR circuit and some cars were going backwards into turn one. Ignore that! Uh, I was driving the black, the orange and black S65 Mustang had started right down the back end of the field. There's slightly, ignore the slightly flyy car, I go around the outside of two vehicles, get myself on the inside for the next corner, and things were going remarkably well for the <laughs> for a start of the race. It didn't last long, I got a massive shunt from a King Cobra that took out all of the rear aero of my car, that pretty much killed any hope of handling, and then my TV momentarily turned off, so I kind of flicked my car to the left. Uh, luckily it came back on in time for me to know where I was going, uh, however I had to sort of sit and wait and let everybody go past before I could set back off again. Um, yeah, it, 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 it was a good start to begin with, it went very rapidly downhill, and in my very broken Mustang I did not have very, very good handling. At the front things were much closer, Husky was driving the gold coloured Camaro, has a brave move going too wide through that very fast corner, almost pays off, doesn't matter too much as the red Mustang outbreaks himself into the final corner, Husky gets up the inside, there's some overtaking going on uh, in the background, that hairpin, probably a best overtaking spot on this track, uh, they were very very close as <laughs> they come around the final corner and across the line to start the second lap, all the meanwhile a Mustang in third was catching up to them. First corner here can be a little bit tricky. I love the first corner here, however everybody takes a different line through it, which means when everybody's racing very, very closely, you do occasionally have the uh, the odd bump through there. This is also quite a hard track to overtake on. There's a lot of very fast corners with very small braking zones. This is one of your better places to overtake. Uh, Husky goes very defensive and the red Mustang can't find a way past. Your next uh, fairly good overtaking spot is the corner that's coming up now. Mustang's up the inside. Husky's trying to brave it out around the outside. Runs a little bit wide. The white Mustang is, is gone. <laughs> Not seen too many cars roll there, but the uh, white Mustang is now stuck on his side. It's through these next very fast corners. Uh, when your car has broken aero like mine did, these were terrifying. I would imagine these cars that are racing at the front were significantly better. Husky thinks about going for the spectacular, can't quite do it. The red Mustang runs just a little bit wide. Uh, Husky's up the inside. However, the Mustang does have a little bit of the lead again. The red Mustang struggling with the brakes into the final hairpin. Husky gets up the inside, as I said last time. But definitely your best overtaking spot is into this final hairpin. Uh, the other places on the track are quite tricky. Uh, not the easiest of places to overtake, but uh, Husky was back in the lead. I was working on a sort of a recovery drive with my somewhat poorly Mustang. Yeah, when you have no rear aero on this car, it's horrible. It really was quite a difficult vehicle to drive. I was uh, in a Camaro sandwich. I had a wheel, <laughs> wheel on the dirt, trying to find a way past. Was just a little bit too far back coming into that corner. Uh, I give him a little bit of assistance, a little bit of boost coming up towards the next corner. I have a look at the inside. Uh, we're sort of too wide through there. The Camaro just has enough grip. Don't mind the Mustang. You can get around. <laughs> get around that uh, for now then it's on to the very fast section this is where you'll see my car really struggled I really struggled uh, with the turn and trying to get my car into the corners the back end constantly wanting to step out um, whereas the modern Camaro goes around the outside of me almost gets up the inside and in fact he does get up the inside of the white Camaro uh, yeah, good double overtake there from the uh, the black and red Camaro further towards the front this is the battle for third place between a Mustang Cobra R, I believe it is, and a King Cobra, one of the most useless of vehicles ever made. Uh, however, this one was doing pretty well and gets a good drive through. Uh, I don't, I don't want to call that corner. It's a scary corner. People think of a name for that corner. Um, either way, it's a, a great cutback from the King Cobra to get up the inside of the other Mustang. The, the pass isn't quite done and they have to run almost too wide. It is very, very close between the pair of them through that final corner. However, the King Cobra has just got enough speed. I didn't expect to be saying that, but it does have enough speed to hold off the Cobra R as they go into turn one. I was, as you could see, <laughs> still having problems with my Mustang. I had got past the Camaro, uh, but was really fighting my car. At, uh, at this point, the Camaro is going to do the 
thinking about doing the incredibly brave around the outside. Needn't worry, I'm sideways. I am very sideways. I managed to save it. Um, lost an awful lot of time in doing so. Now I've got, I think that's an 05 Mustang, was getting up the inside. I was late on the brakes, a little too late, and go so soaring up the inside. Luckily, I realised I'd outbreak myself in time and could avoid clattering into the two cars. And um, yeah, the brakes on my car were not the best, I'll be honest. <laughs> with all the damage it was a pain it was still though having some good fun racing at the front and well it had been like this for basically eight laps the entire race husky had been doing his best and had been holding off the red mustang the mustang could not find a way past he had tried pretty much everything uh, to get past and uh, this is one of the one of the slight problems uh, we could say slight problem I don't know uh, with this track it is it's a very very tough place to overtake and if you are too far back into a couple of corners you are gonna have a really hard time because through this fast section there is there is nothing you can do and these two cars were pretty evenly matched there wasn't any anyone noticeably or sort of significantly quicker at a straight line both seem to be pretty good handling on this lap, Husky was a little bit out of shape through the fir first part of the S's and again is a little bit out of shape through here. Also, well done to the back marker for keeping out of the way at a very dangerous spot. So a thank you for that one. The Mustang got an excellent, excellent drive coming up towards the hairpin. However, he is stuck on the outside. He tries to do a cutback, gets to the inside as Husky runs quite wide. Now it's just a simple drag race to the line. Husky is on the inside and can get into the final corner first and Husky will take the win. So it's one win for the Camaros. The Mustangs though would get second, third and fourth. It was quite an eventful uh, opening race. We move on to our second race at Sunset Peninsula. I really quite like this track. We don't run it very often though because it is notorious four vehicles rolling over. Again, me and Husky had started fairly near the back and soon everything went a little bit balmy. Uh, we <laughs> you occasionally have a few bumps and scrapes on the opening laps of these. Not surprising, especially not when we're driving A-class muscle cars that don't have the best handling. But even then, normally <laughs> They are better than this. As you can see, I had got fed up of my classic Mustang having no brakes, so I swapped to my trusty Death Race one, and still all of the crashes were going on. I was doing my best to try and avoid all of the carnage. Um, I was still going. I was still vaguely pointing in the right way, but yet again, I had fairly significant damage. This time to the front of my car, as there is a very sideways Camaro. I have got enough acceleration to get past the Camaros that bump into each other. It's all going a little bit bananas. I then <laughs> outbreak myself, run far too wide. There's a Camaro up the inside while they're all tussling for the outside. Round goes a Camaro, <laughs> and I... I am not sure how I survived pointing in the right direction on that one. I... yeah. I can now breathe. There is nothing around me, which was nice. It was a crazy, crazy first lap. Absolutely, stupidly crazy, that one. Uh, I had survived, but with a fair amount of damage. The field was kind of trying to reshuffle itself after a very, very chaotic first lap. So there were some faster cars further back that were trying to make their way through the field. This uh, pink Camaro try being one of them. Uh, three wide doesn't quite fit there as they all end up bumping into each other. Not sure where the black Camaro is going. He's run out of road. There's, a, there's another Camaro an awful long way on two wheels. Something in the background of Mustang, I think that was, uh, very nearly rolled it. Uh, the pink Camaro has a big lunge. Can't quite get his car stopped. The blue, blue Camaro is back up the inside, but... Uh, the pink car that we are following is the significantly better handling. There is another big, big slide, and somehow the pink car, that's a very small gap he got through. That, that would have been a little bit scary going through there with a very sideways car, or very uncontrollable car, I should say, uh, on your outside. But he got the move done and could keep hold of the place. Of course, it wouldn't be sunset without something falling over, and sure enough, there goes a Mustang. Doesn't quite go over the first time. Bounces off the wall though, and then <laughs> completes a full roll. Y yeah, it's it's going to happen at sunset. It was always going to happen. Somebody <laughs> was to go over, and it was the blue Mustang that would be first. I yeah, I had some damage, but my car was still phenomenally fast in a straight line. I've used this car in a couple of other versus the communities. Uh, it's a really good A-class car. This Mustang. Uh, and sure enough, I have huge amounts of straight line. That's with about 70-80% aero damage on the front and sides. And it just blew past 
uh, <laughs> another 05 Mustang. Fortunately, or unfortunately I should say, sorry, uh, I may have outbraked myself a little bit. Might be fortunately, uh, if you <laughs> if you were the white Mustang, as I run wide through sort of turn two and three, the white Mustang gets up the inside. I didn't quite realise he was there. I have to panic and end up a little bit wide. It's then too wide through the chicane. I jump the chicane to make sure we don't run into each other. Uh, <laughs> then get on two wheels. Somebody in the background had had a roll on the Willet roll corner at some point. And now I'm back to trying to find a way past. I don't have the handling through these corners. I don't have anywhere near as much grip uh, as the white Mustang with both running a little bit wide through there. I've got so much acceleration through the chicane. I can't really do anything with it though. Everybody's being a little bit careful <laughs> of that curb. The white uh, Mustang gets a very good drive down this sort of small straight. I'm looking around the outside, never really likely going, likely to pass around there, especially not in uh, the less the less grippy of the two cars. I need to get a neat run through here, which I do, and then I have a good chance uh, into the chicane. As you saw, I have so much more acceleration. And sure enough, I cruise up to the back of him, have a look as we come into this final nasty chicane. I get the position briefly, however, he has so much grip he can go around the outside. It, the move probably would have worked. He probably would have got the position back had it not been for the fact that we were now going on to a very large banked turn followed by a very long straight. And that is where the speed of my Mustang comes in. And as you can see, I can pull a fairly significant gap before we get to the first corner at the front. And it had been a fairly quiet race for Husky. To be fair, this hadn't been the most exciting of races. After the silliness of lap one, a lot of vehicles were broken, had to take a trip to the pits. Uh, and the field got very spread out very early on. Uh, so Husky was, yeah, going to take the win. He's, he somehow, I have no idea how he survived that first lap carnage. He started behind me. Uh, he did a better job of <laughs> getting through the field on this particular race. And he would cross the line to take a win. As a first and second for the Camaros, I would climb up to third. I think it was third, fourth, fifth, sixth, possibly even seventh for the Mustangs. We move on to our third and final race at the Sebring Club Circuit. Another fairly good starting position for me as we go into turn one. It didn't last long as I promptly get bumped off the track. Me and another Mustang uh, take the better route for escaping that one. Opted for that line to try and avoid as much chaos in coming on the track. And we, we did well. We both got on the track cleanly. There was a little bit more bumping. Again, not a particularly good first lap or opening few corners uh, for this race as we run down towards the three wide in the background. It was, yeah, slightly chaotic shall we say with these cars the leader had already made a huge gap to second place that was uh, in front of me further back as we come on to the second lap it looked like people were going to go three wide into turn one luckily the orange mustang thought better of it looks like he was struggling a little bit to uh, to get his car stopped into that first one the uh, <laughs> something's escaping the track in the background that first hairpin can be a little bit tricky on the opening laps is a very tight corner very narrow corner uh, to try and fit 16 muscle cars into as we run down the back straight the king cobra just did not have much of the speed camaros up the inside the king cobra though does have a lot better grip and he's trying to go around the outside he might be able to cut back to the inside not quite enough space Camaro gets a little bit of a wobble and the King Cobra is going to do the very brave maneuver around the outside of a corner that you don't normally go around the outside. Uh, well done on that. Uh, that gets the overtake of the evening. Unfortunately, he doesn't get his car back to the inside and the Camaro will get past him uh, on the next corner. The Cobra doesn't give up fighting, still trying to get back at the uh, Camaro. It's around the outside of the final corner. It's a very long way around there. And eventually the King Cobra just runs out of grip and then runs out of speed uh, on the straights. Poor King Cobra tried his best, but uh, lack of uh, any straight line speed really. You can see how much the Camaro has pulled away. Even on a track like this that doesn't have massively long straights, you do need that bit of straight line speed. This was the train for second place. The leader was long gone, in fact was out of sight uh, at this point. Husky was trying to fend off three Mustangs. I was at the front of the queue behind him with my phenomenally quick uh, 05 Mustang, but Husky was defending very heavily and I was having problems. Can't really go around the outside of the first hairpin as I just don't have the grip. Husky's car is an awful lot more planted. However, we go on to yet another straight and you will see I will cruise up to the back. I try to get on the inside. Husky squeezes me out of it uh, and I just run out of road. And again, I'm on the outside for the next corner, not where I want to be. Can't really do very much uh, out there in the background. The, the other two Mustangs in uh, fourth and fifth 
we're very, very close. And I get myself in the rather awkward position if I want to be attacking the car in front. But the problem is if I attack too much, I leave myself open to attack from behind. As you see, I run a little bit wide. Now the blue Mustang's right up the inside. I have to back out of it, uh, give, them, <laughs> give them a little bit of space. Yeah, it's not nice being in the middle of um, of that tussle because, yeah, you, you, you want to really be at the back. The classic Mustang has the best point of view for this. He can go full on attack uh, with the car in front, doesn't have to worry about the vehicles behind. Husky had made a little bit of a gap to us uh, briefly. Once we start fighting each other and uh, we're out of range of Husky, Husky could make a little bit of headway because we're all slowing each other down. So we really needed to work together, which we didn't because we're racing drivers and we just ignore that and fight each other. And that's what goes on <laughs> versus the community. Nobody ever works together um, in these. The classic Mustang was pretty damn fast on the acceleration front and has a massive dive into turn one. I am not sure how he stopped that. That is a mighty good overtake to get his car up the inside there. Unfortunately, he can't quite hold it on the exit. Um, he has got, uh, as I said, a lot of acceleration, but can't quite get his car uh, far enough alongside. He's having a little bit of a look. The blue Mustang goes defensive, though, um, and he can't quite get past. Yeah, I'm still not sure how he stopped that into turn one. That was uh, an impressive dive. You can see while these two are battling, they've given me enough space to go and catch up to Husky. A lap later, and I was still, every single time we race at Sebring Club, I get stuck behind Husky. I think for the last three times in a row we've raced here, possibly even more than that, I've been stuck and just could not find a way past Husky. This case, I think it's always been the case, I've had the faster car in a straight line as well. Again, trying to go around the outside, I can't do it though. I just do not have the grip in my Mustang. While it does have good brakes, has better brakes than the blue in 65 Mustang I had, it is no match for the Camaro. I think about having a dive, a can't quite do it. I give Husky a little bit of a nudge, but that slows me down as well. Now the blue, <laughs> blue Mustang's getting involved. He's looking around the outside of this next corner. He has pretty good grip as well. Uh, I was I was the fastest of these lot in a straight line, but the worst of the handling. I think the 65 Mustang was a little slower, very quick on the acceleration front, a little slower than mine, but better handling than mine. And of course, the blue Mustang and Husky's Camaro were both fairly slow in a straight line, but very good handling. Yet again, down the front straight, Husky's gone defensive, and I can't do anything about it. Going around the outside of this first corner is incredibly tricky. I'm trying to kind of cut back to the inside, and as Husky runs wide, I think I might have done it, and then the two, uh, the two 05 Mustangs tangle, and the 65 Mustang has gone from fifth to second in one move. And guess where I am? Stuck right back behind Husky's Camaro yet again. This time, though, I am on the inside as we come up to one of the better overtaking points. Annoyingly, Husky has enough grip to just go straight around the outside of me. Uh, I'm still on alongside. I'm still trying to go around the outside. I can't quite hold it. There's a, <laughs> there's a slightly sideways death race Mustang. I'm on two wheels. Just about got my car back under control. Husky runs out wide. I go for the inside. The blue Mustang tries to do the cutback on all of us. Uh, it's three wide. This is not going to end well. I back out of it. I tried to keep myself on the inside of Husky uh, to at least have made up one position couldn't quite do it yet again Husky's got the grip and Husky can get back past the blue Mustang as they round the final corner now there becomes a drag race down the front straight for the third fourth I don't even know many times we did the exactly the same routine and it's a routine that I'm going to win with, <laughs> with my death race car I'm back past the blue Mustang I'm on the outside of Husky uh, it's the braking zone and uh, no I can't go around there uh, the blue Mustang not quite far enough alongside to get past me and we're back exactly where we were <laughs> a lap ago and still I couldn't none of us could find a way past Husky again phenomenal speed from my death race car but I can't do anything with it because I'm still stuck on the outside. This time I'm further alongside Husky, just get a little bump, just get squeezed out. Now the blue car's got back past me as well. Now it's his turn to go sideways and he can have an attack. Husky a little bit too far back into this corner to really do very much. I'm now, I'm now in the prime position. If I can be on maximum attack, I don't have to worry about any cars behind me. Blue Mustang has a dive up the inside. Husky 
runs a little bit wide again a little bit of paint swapping going on I have I can sort of accelerate my car very quickly but I can't really do very much just sort of run out of space Husky's very wide around the final corner I get up the inside and we have another drag race on which uh, is no real competition as I saw past Husky's Camaro now I've got to try and deal with the other Mustang that got past me sure enough I get to the inside annoyingly just outbreak myself into turn one uh, fall off the road a little bit and yay I'm back behind Husky's bloody Camaro I am fairly bored of the back of the Camaro I spent I think nine laps it was uh, looking at the back of this blooming Camaro I uh, haven't got past it twice um, and then ended up back behind it again I was not best pleased in the end Husky just ran out of grip on the final corner and I could soar past yeah this was a pretty damn phenomenal race uh, and I didn't balls it up into turn one I was actually a little bit cautious this time round uh, again it slowed into turn one uh, and then I could accelerate away Husky's Camaro not quite as fast here as it had been uh, at the other tracks and leader had none of the fun or or a lot easier race depending on what, what way you look at it um, yeah he got to the lead by the first corner I think and driven away his car wasn't significantly quicker than ours over the course of the lap but we'd been so busy fighting with each other this Camaro had pulled a humongous lead um, and yeah I, I think it was on the final lap that we actually spread out and could sort of set clean times if you like uh, so yeah, a fairly straightforward win for the Camaro and the Mustang train, again it was a Camaro victory, second, third and fourth for the Mustangs. It was going to be the 65 Mustang that would take second ahead of the blue 05 Mustang in third. I would end up in fourth with Husky in fifth. Yeah, this was a phenomenal race for second place. Elsewhere it wasn't particularly exciting, again uh, a fairly miserable first lap, so quite a lot of cars broken and there are no pit lanes here, uh, or no pit lane, sorry, here. So yeah, the rest of the field was a, an awful lot spread out and not much went on, but uh, the race for second place was... it was incredible. <laughs> basically um yeah that was a that was a phenomenally good race that one uh, however that is it for today so thank you very much for watching the next fail race versus the community shall be on thursday the 22nd of may it shall be on forza 4 uh, it shall be starting at 7 p.m gmt time and we are going to be running cycled production uh, it'll be easy for me to show you or explain on the forums what we're doing but basically we will be right everybody will be running exactly stock cars there'll be three different cars uh, on three different tracks they shall all be on the forums so you can find out there what we will be running because i cannot necessarily tell you what race you will be in due to people not turning up uh have one of each car ready basically um yeah you will only use one they will be run completely stock no tuning uh, none of that we've done these before and they can produce some very very good racing and haven't done one of them for a while so uh, that is what we are going to be doing however that is it for today so thank you very much for watching and until next time goodbye